Yo, peace, everybody. So, yeah, man, I mean, listen, not not, not to beat around the bush, man. There's, there's a lot going on in the world, particularly over in the Ukraine, what's going on over there. You know, trust and believe, you know, we, myself, for, you know, some of the, some of my followers here, some of the followers of Garja Grill, you know, we got a lot of Eastern Euro, a lot of Ukrainian fans, man. Just naturally, if you just go into the, to the comment section, our thoughts and prayers with y'all, man. I mean, like this is this is this is nothing that we're just kind of having a blind eye towards, man. This is some some world shit, man. I mean, let, let's just keep it a bean. But like I said, our, our thoughts and prayers for for everybody over there, unfortunately having to bunker up and, and deal with, with what's going on. But again, before obviously starting this video, it's it's been the news of the world, man. So I felt weird not mentioning it, you know before before you know obviously making this video so again my, our thoughts and prayers man so we got word today like I, at this point we imagine canelo alvarez officially will, <laughs> will be taking his talents back to the zone at the very least for the the 2022 calendar as he will be facing dimitri Bival may 7th uh, TBA, uh, the, you know, I'm assuming Las Vegas, if, if not, uh, uh, you know, uh, at and I want to say Vegas, followed by what I, look, I'm going to say it, man, a fight that I still feel is spoiled milk at this point, and that is the third fight with Triple G, which will culminate September 17th, Mexican Independence Day. So, this is Canelo back to fighting at least in September because September the, that date he's pa he's bypassed obviously the last couple of years because of what's been going on but it seems like he might be uh, coming back to those those familiar dates particularly September but yeah man um, I, th they haven't disclosed the exact dollar amount but from what we were hearing the zone couldn't match. Al Heyman's offer of Jamal Charlo and David Benavidez from a financial standpoint, yet Canelo Alvarez still took the lesser money. And I guess at this point, this is where the debate's going to come is a concerns, which is the tougher calendar year. You know, uh, was it the Al Heyman route or was it the route he's going to take um, starting with Dimitri Bivol? I think it's 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 I think for Canelo regardless of the move that he made I really feel it would it really was a damn if you do damn if you don't situation because here's the thing okay I was of the belief that they they probably would target Charlo because I'm going to say this man like Canelo would be a significant favorite in that fight but it's Ch Jamal Charlo, I guess, I mean, listen, man, this is, that fight would have been Jamal Charlo's opportunity. You know, I see some of the rhetoric that Charlo, that Canelo needed Charlo on his resume. Like, get out of here, man. Like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what are y'all talking about? But at the same time, it's a fresh fight. But I could see where people would have found, uh, they, they, they would have found it where Canelo was cherry picking Jamal Charlo being Jamal Charlo hasn't looked fantastic as of outside of Dimitri. I'm sorry. Outside of um, outside of uh, what is your man? Why am I drawing a blank here? Uh, um, the Dervianchenko. Just the names getting away from me. Outside of Dervianchenko, like. What what would you consider Jamal Charlo's like best performance that would have garnered him a Canelo fight that people would have been like, holy shit, wow, they're really fighting, you know? Let me take my glasses off here, sorry. Uh, so, on one aspect, I was like, I was cool with the fight, but I could see where Canelo would be still a significant favorite in that fight, right? Then there's the David Benavides fight. Which is, I think, collectively, man, I haven't talked to anybody that doesn't want to see that fight. I've seen where people have said, you know, Benavidez isn't ready. He needs to get a couple wins. Da, 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 da. I'm like in the middle. 
But I think collectively, man, all of us, if they told us Canelo and David Benavides are fighting, like, who's not going to watch that? So then from that aspect, I think you're, 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 you're one for two as it concerns a fight that presents some kind of danger for Canelo. However you look at Benavides, okay? Then you got Dimitri Bival and Triple G, okay? Which I will say the parallel I see with both of these fights when I look at Dimitri Bival, okay? D listen, guys, if y'all think Dimitri Bival is going to be a walk in the park for Canelo, man, I'm telling y'all, I don't think this is going to be an easy fight for him, okay? Which is why I'm. if, if there's any parallel fight that I'm going to say that maybe the Benavides fight would present Canelo. Bival kind of fits in that lane. Listen, man, he's bigger than David Benavides. He's a genuine light heavyweight. He's been at light heavyweight. He's undefeated. He just hasn't had the opportunity. David Benavides is, give or take, smaller. Don't mistake in height and size and everything, okay? Now, Dimitri Bival's not the biggest light heavyweight, but he's an acclimated light heavyweight. And David Benavidez, similarly, inexperienced against top level or big names, per se. But he still presents danger, okay? Bival, in the same respects, give or take, is kind of the same thing. I'm not saying Dimitri Bival's a big power puncher or anything, but again, he... We've only seen Canelo once at light heavyweight. And I'll tell you, that wasn't like the best we've seen at Canelo against a washed Kovalev. So I think the danger between <laughs> whether between Bival and Triple G, it's Bival to me that's that's the risk. Triple G, in kind of a similar fashion, how I look at Jamal. I could see where Canelo would be the significant favorite against Triple G. Now, why now why would Canelo pick those two fights over Benavidez and Charlo? I'll tell you, man. I really feel it comes down as crazy as it sounds, I really feel it does come down to Triple G. And I I think the reason is is because out of all those four guys, he's still the guy and, and you guys can go back to two years. I'll, I'll try to post the link up here. And I, I said this a couple of years ago. As long as there is an opportunity for him to make any kind of money with Triple G, even if it gets to this point now where we see it as spoiled milk, Canelo, as long as the money is right, he's going to probably take that fight. Why? Because the chances of him stopping Triple G now are much greater. Triple G's going to be 40 years old this year he's been very inactive and it's still a fight that is familiar with the general public and how whatever people think about triple g now and i have my opinions of him as it concerns what I, the kind of format i think he's at now he's still the last guy to give canelo problems and that's how they're going to paint it I haven't talked to much of anybody who thought Canelo won the first fight. Myself, the crew, we thought Canelo edged the second fight. So by many accounts, this is the rubber match. But I, I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely feel he they are looking at the Triple G fight as a fight that is going to put Canelo like from a status of a guy that had that he had the most trouble with and the likelihood of Canelo going in there and stopping Triple G the third fight that's just for us we get it but for the commercial public that's going to raise his stock because he 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 came over granted he won the second fight but it was still close if he stops Triple G in the third fight which I kind of am mirroring a little bit not stylistically but how I kind of think maybe, just maybe it might go, go back to Pacquiao Morales 3. Uh, uh, Eric Morales that had seen his best days against a Pacquiao that was just, 
you know? So, but in any case, man, we still got to see the fights, okay? I mean, we say all this stuff, but we got to see how everything pans out. Winner Triple G just is Canelo's kryptonite, man, even at 40. I doubt it, but we, again, we have to see the fights. But let me, t again, when people said, when, when I was hearing Bivol was going to be the option, I really didn't complain because while I haven't seen Bavol like at his very, very best, I think that it right now, the, the form that Bivol is in, that's a more difficult fight than Kovalev. Stylistically, it just is. So I'm going to watch both of them. But let me tell you all something, man. This might be a blessing for the PVC. Because I think what's going to need to happen for e either one of those guys, or any one of those guys, and I think whoever comes out of there, whoever comes out of the smoke that I feel is going to happen in the under that umbrella being Benavidez, Charlo, uh, Caleb Plant, like they all got to fight each other. They all got to fight each other. And I think whoever comes out the smoke clear is going to be the guy that I think next year is going to get the Canelo sweepstakes. It just, that just seems, because I just don't see Canelo retiring anytime soon. He's only 31 years old. So, but anyway, uh, it's it made, made official. Canelo signs his two-fight deal with DAZN. Uh, is going to be fighting Dimitri Bivol first, May 7th, followed by Gennady Golovkin, <laughs> uh, September 17th. And as, as far as I'm aware, like I had mentioned before, these fights are going to be DAZN pay-per-view. Let's see how this works. Let me know what you think. Follow me at, Gar at uh, <laughs> Roberto underscore flag on Instagram. Follow crew at Garge Grove Boxing on Instagram. Like, subscribe, notification bell. I'll be back soon. Peace.